or anything nerdy Boom! at all. Boom! We are live! <laughs> yeah, Shut I guess up, I did. Joel! You're saying something somewhere! I'm not Joel. <laughs> oh, Joel's... Uh, <laughs> like, nah. mm. <laughs> Welcome to the Weekly Poll! I am one of your hosts, Benny the Comic Historian. If you saw the promo on my channel, then you probably know who I am. <laughs> and the upper left I like how corner, Sal. Huh? I like how Sal's just like, I'm Sal. <laughs> <laughs> if you uh, look in the upper left hand corner or right over here, <laughs> that would be Sal from Comic Pop. Equally well, um, as important as Comic Pop is right over there, Tif Tiffany. <laughs> no. And the guy above me doesn't matter, but some of you may know him as Comics <gasps> Explained. I've got a computer, i got a monitor block over there, a power block for the monitor, and I haven't used that. Oh no, no, that's for the ultra wide that I have sitting over there. That's <laughs> you kidding, uh, buddy? Wow. Damn, I really need to, like, organize this room. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you spend all your time... All I, actually, I was going to say you spend all your time over here, but you don't anymore. You've been at your house now for, like, consistently for, like, three weeks. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's also kind of a problem because, like, I'm, I'm really lazy. So <laughs> yes. that tends to cause issues with <laughs> organization. <laughs> all right, guys, so today you can't... What are you, oh. fat grifter? Because I'm fat pool. <laughs> uh, are you? Did you really it. just call him Fat Grifter? Are you serious? I call myself <laughs> Fat Pool. <laughs> wow. I can't even fit it over my face. See, it's not. It's, it's wow. just helping my case. <laughs> <laughs> Benny, you are so insensitive to the needs of others. Hey, Rob. Yeah. Are you aware you're a larger individual? You know, I take back everything I said before. I don't know if you would be a good dad. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, You're I'm probably being picked right, on by kids friend. at school. Well, He's like, maybe you lose a few. Because of it. Really? Like, wow, wow. Benny. Wow. wow. What? And you wonder, you wonder why I just, why, why I've been not coming over as often. <laughs> it's not my fault. <clears throat> wow. <laughs> Jesus. All right, guys. So today's topic is going to be three hot topics of the day. We're going to talk about Doomsday Clock. We're going to talk about DC Metal and why it's kicking Secret Empire's butt. And we're going to talk about Hot Topic. And we're going to talk about... No, not Hot Topic. We're going to talk about hot Screen top. Junkies. And since everyone's wondering what joke. the hell's going on with that, let's kick off with that discussion. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you guys who don't know, uh, Andy Signor, <laughs> the guy who created Screen Junkies, has been captured... Uh, captured. He has been captured and detained. <laughs> he He's has been caught like, sexually Pokemon. harassing other employees. Yeah. Well, the woman he was sexually harassing went to the HR department two months ago, and they responded by not doing anything. So mm -hmm. on Thursday, I believe the first day of New York Comic Con, she just went up and publicly said what had happened, which brought a bunch of people out of the woodwork. And as we discovered for the last two, three years, he's been doing this. Yeah. So It really sucks. <laughs> Sal, since Sal's a super fan of Screen Junkies. <laughs> the biggest Screen Junkies fan of all time. <laughs> Never get anything uh, from any other YouTube channel signed before Benny signs anything, or he will accuse you of being the largest. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, admittedly. I mean, here's, yeah, like like a, like a few million other people, I also watch Honest Trailers and uh, movie fights and other things. A friend of mine was actually I don't. featured prominently. You don't watch movie fights? I it's really don't. Actually, I don't at all. Dude, a, a I have never seen one audience. episode. I'm, I'm admitting it's a now show. that oh, I've never Honest seen Trailers one is hilarious. Trailers is great. It's is yeah. is it as good as uh, um, the other guy? How it should have ended? No, but uh, I'm saying that because I want how it should have ended to call me. But uh, that being said, yeah, no. Uh, so yeah, the 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 bottom line is, uh, uh, you know, Andy got uh, got pinched being a be, being a creeper, and that really sucks because like not the part where he got caught. No, no. <laughs> yeah, it sucks that they found out about it, and these like these these you know these people they just. They this just is a test everything. donation no, it's for like, Dola. It sucks that HR didn't do anything about it beforehand. It sucks that like whenever anybody because the same thing happened with freaking Weinstein. Like it's we had like a miniature version of it and then a massive version of it all in the same week, where or some like someone in a position of authority <phone rings> took advantage of women in their uh, employ and. The only way they got justice is by coming outside and just yelling about their abuse. And, like, that really blows that the systems in place weren't there to protect them. Right. That's, I think, why people are so pissed at Defy and Screen Junkies in general is mm. not just because, like, they let him do this. Is it, is it, it looks like most of the people involved in the, in, the, in the organization were, like, totally unaware of it. Mm. Well, no, because what she's claiming in the Screen Junkies situation is that they were aware of it and they were well, pushing HR, it under the rug. Yes. 
Well, the, the, the prominent members of the team, or at least HR, was well, well I, no question, HR was 100% aware of it. Um, that's and that totally sucks. That's like completely messed up, and it it's not how things should be run. And I and I hope that it people, I hope it's a learning experience for everybody else out there who's like running anything is like mm-hmm. this is not cool and. Right, you don't know, get you... caught. No, I'm, I'm joking. That's a serious joke. <laughs> no, that's that's actually the Hollywood mantra. It's like, hey, yeah. look, we don't care what you do as long as you don't get caught. Well, but yeah. if your hand ends up in that cookie jar, well, then it's on you. <laughs> well, yeah. the, the worst yeah. part about the Andy Andy situation is like everyone coming out of the woodwork. Like, yeah. I yeah. mean, not that it's right, and I don't think it's right in any way, shape, or form. But like, especially in Hollywood, they like to forgive the the one offense. Oh, yes. he slipped once. He'll never yeah. slip again. But it came out of the woodwork that this has been going on for a while, and they've been getting a lot of complaints. Oh, she and like, the first one to be public. And we got text messages. We've got emails. Ooh. We've got like messages galore, like just evidence after evidence after evidence that not only like supports it, but is is you could read what he says, and it's like, oh, that really blows. Like, mm-hmm. really blows that you know people can be that way, and. Yeah. You know, yeah. it just—it's just a shitty situation. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm at least thankful if there is any silver lining to this that like justice can be can be can be had for some of these for the, some of these women. Uh, uh, we need a blue drop. We had a subscribe. <laughs> and now, wholly inappropriately, uh, Rob <laughs> is going to splooge at our audience. <laughs> I just realized I didn't even connect to that. I just did our usual sub thing. Rob, yes. Can, well, let's hold the splooge until we move to the doomsday clock. <laughs> let's hold the splooge until we at least are not talking about this about the sexual way, uh, uh, harassment. Did you yeah. did you hear? By the way, in the same vein, did you hear some of the shit that Weinstein was accused of? Dude, I was just thinking about that. Dude, it is. It's crazy because, like, I always thought, like, Weinstein was just, like, just this squeaky clean whole, well, like, thing. I actually thing. nothing about Weinstein. Yeah. Wow. Harvey Weinstein? Yeah. Like, like they back a lot of films. Okay. And it's it's crazy because now, like, Gwyneth Paltrow, Angelina Jolie, like, all these actresses are coming out. And they're like, yeah, like, we are, we've, we've been a victim of that. Yeah. And it's like, Jesus, man. You know, you know what brought all this stuff on? There's there's a rumor and names will not be named, but there's a rumor that a particular actor who ended up having a not really a meltdown of sorts, but whose life basically took kind of a negative turn in Hollywood and made his recovery, uh, basically just like dropped this bombshell of all this information, just leaked all this stuff out to the press about all these things that were going on in Hollywood that people just never ever talked about for years and years and years and years, mm. and like it, that led to a lot of this stuff coming out. It's it's kind of crazy. Wow, I was just reading the New York Times article about him. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's it's insane. The people coming out of the woodwork, it's it's bonkers. I mean, it makes Bill Cosby it, make, it makes No, it, it doesn't make Bill, Bill it's not quite Bill Cosby. No, no, that's that's what I'm saying. It's not it's it's no, I mean, in terms of what he's like what people are coming out and what they're saying, yeah. it's yeah. way above what Bill Cosby was pulling. So it's it's pretty insane. Like it's pretty nuts. And this begs the question, if it's people like Cosby and like Weinstein that are doing stuff like this, like what in the hell else is going on over there? Right. What about right. people in like the mid tier range? People like people who like have a modicum of power who are, yeah. used to this, who, who doesn't stand to, it's not a, it's not a juicy news story to out these people. You know what right. I mean? Like you're absolutely yeah. right. I mean, I've seen tons of people in the, in the growth of the channels and stuff like that. I've seen various people, Everywhere from fellow YouTubers to Twitch people to fellow just individuals in power who yeah. let it go completely to their head. Like completely. Yeah. I don't I'm not saying I've watched any sexual harassment, but you can see a complete shift in their demeanor and their behavior towards just you and other people, and you can definitely see that. Are you okay, Tiffany? I'm yeah, sorry, Tiffany I'm, looks flat I'm reading. I'm reading. <laughs> I was like, are, are you in shock that power goes to people's heads? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm reading. Did you get to the potted plant? Uh, no, no, I got to the part of the elaborate system of reliant on cooperation of others. Oh, yeah. Where, like, assistants would book meetings, arrange the hotel rooms, and sometimes even deliver talent, then disappear, and the act, uh, well, like, the things were going on. going on. I did not get to the potted plant. Where's the potted plant? I don't the know. The potted plant is literally just Weinstein cornered a young woman in a restaurant hallway and proceeded to pleasure himself and wrapped things up into a nearby potted plant. That was Wait, the... I didn't read that part. You didn't hear wow. that story. Andy Signor like... just looks like he just basically sexually harassed women in Twitter. No. Signor, his, his, his stories are just like, yeah, it's still shitty and it really sucks. It's right, not right, Weinstein yeah. level, but it's, well, it's, it's like, here's Weinstein and then here's the screen junkies thing. I mean, like, I'm sure that Signor is kind of like, oh my God, thank you Weinstein for screwing up so bad. That really helps me out of a jam. 
what? Wow. wow. That's sad. That really sucks, like, on all accounts. It's just like, what? Like, in, in this world where I can take a picture at any moment, at any time, take a full video in HD, like, at, at any point, at any moment, why ever do that? Like, why do why ever do any of this? Or how can yeah. you think you can get away with it? Oh, no, because, okay, so, like, Gwyneth Paltrow's story is, is particularly interesting because her argument is that she was 22. Right. And she was she was young. Now, her mom had been well-established in Hollywood. Yes. But her stance from, from her interview and what she argues is that I thought that was just all part of the Hollywood stuff. But she turned it down. Like, she, she ignored him, went to Brad Pitt, Brad Pitt, you know, kind of. But, you know, Weinstein's argument was, like, don't ever tell anybody about this again. Or, like, I will make sure you never work in Hollywood. And, like, with the kind of cut he had, he could do it. Oh, absolutely. So, like, literally would have destroyed her career. So, and that's, that's kind of the weird thing. Because what do you do when you're a woman like Gwyneth Paltrow and you're in this situation where a guy comes at you with, you know, unwanted advances? It's a guy that could single-handedly ruin your career and then later on helps you win an academy award like yeah. what do you do in a situation Tiffany, like could you that? link the article uh, we had a cheer requesting it oh yeah sure oh. i can link the new york times one and i'll link the potted plant one too <laughs> <laughs> i think i think the potted plant one is the one there <laughs> i don't know well, <laughs> well, they want... plant one. <laughs> well they can have uh, both yeah but it's but yeah it's... Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, I mean, honestly, I, I, I was talking about, who was I talking to? Was it you, Ramos, talking about this today or somebody else? But, like, this could be, like, because Defy's refusing to talk about it. Andy Signor's refusing to talk about it. Yep. This is a stigma that's going to stick with them for a while because Andy Signor is not – He's known for screen junkies, you know. But that's the thing is that he, yeah. you you can't. He was just he was let go by Defy. It was two months too late, but they still let him go. There's a you can read the note or the letter that was released, uh, but he is the creator of everything you like about screen junkies. Yeah. Well, that's and, the issue. Yeah. I mean, like, Defy letting him go does not see – it's not seen as though, oh, man, we caught this guy doing a bad thing, and no. we had to let him go because it was clearly the ethical thing to do. It was this guy was doing a bad thing, and he got caught. And That's so we have to do something in order to appease the general public. That's the problem that people have because they see it as a reactionary thing, not because it's the right thing to do. It's the fall in line, yep, fire him because that's what you do, and then you know move on to something else. So yeah. No, they need a top-down restructuring over there because the HR department is 100% culpable for that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you know the same department that was quieting it also let him go. That really is, like, shitty. And, like... I, I and the question is how many people were aware of it? How many people allowed it to happen? A friend of mine has been on movie fights a couple times, and she went to Twitter or Facebook, and uh, she's a writer for TV and a, and a comic in her own right. And she claimed that she was not the recipient of any of these unwanted advances, and in fact didn't even know that it was going on. But she was horrified to see what was going on. So it's interesting to note that like while this did happen and while it was rampant. Uh, it didn't happen to everybody, and so it's it's plausible to imagine that not everybody within the organization was aware that it was going on. When you read the text and you see the the, the messages, they they are pretty covert. Yeah. I mean, they're not. It's not like we're talking about him just. Well, I mean, we are talking about him do like uh, physically advancing on people, and that's really, really, really horrifying. Um, but uh, we're looking at the the real evidence being, or the most the, like the actual tangible, readable evidence is like is just unwanted advances like unwanted requests and 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 and, uh, and you know that kind of thing so uh, domo king says that he loves you rob uh, <laughs> i appreciate it <laughs> and for the question about dreams like, well, oh, we're gonna be getting there i'm watching the clock to see how long we're gonna stay so we don't stay on any topic longer than we need to guys don't worry yeah. no, i mean is, i mean uh, kind of a final thought for me on this whole thing is like, they have to answer and answer fast. I mean, not necessarily answer to the public, but they have to say something fast because the longer they go without answering, the more people dig. Yeah. And the more they dig, like, the more, the more they will, yeah, the more they'll find. And so it's like, you know, like, you, it's best to nip this in the bud, take your lumps, you know, and just move on as opposed to just stay silent. That's the worst thing you can do is stay silent. It was something like this. Oh, yeah. That's huge. No, you got to you gotta come out. You got to get in front of that. Yeah. Big time. Yeah, it's I mean, crazy. the way I look at it is they, they, that's the problem right now. They should have acted the first time it was reported. You know, at the bare minimum, now that it's finally public, they should have been immediately reacting with this will be handled swiftly and effectively, and they yep. haven't been, and that's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm, they yeah. should have just taken care of it when it was first. I mean, if, if they didn't want this to be a disastrous meltdown, there should have been steps taken at that point. Like, the fact I mean, that yeah. it wasn't no. is a problem. I'm not saying early, early on he could have, oh, definitively have fired him. There's like a thousand steps in the military. 
we, we, everyone knows that there's a sexual problem of harassment and assault and things like that. And there's a thousand things that they do before they just get rid of somebody. And, yeah. But that's because once it's reported, it's handled. It doesn't go yeah. under yeah. the radar forever, you know? Yeah. yeah. No, totally. Yeah. So. No, and to answer somebody's question, uh, he was suspended last Friday, and he was fired two days ago. Oh, so, so he yeah. officially did go through? Yeah, oh, he was, yeah. yeah, he was fired a couple days ago. Okay. Um, and as far as the individual asking me about Scooby-Doo, yes, I do follow Scooby-Doo. <laughs> 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 All right, so, oh, I mean, th this is a good topic. We moved on. We got to hit it. Uh, anyone, anyone have any final thoughts they want to go on before we move on to the one everyone wants us to talk about? Doomsday <laughs> Clock. Doomsday <laughs> Clock. I got another Dude, to say that about Jeff John's it. panel. God, that Jeff John's panel was crazy, and it was amazing. You know it's what I just crazy, realized? amazing. I may have a problem. What? You know, I, I can call the conversation and play a game pretty well. I'm playing Destiny on the side, and I just look at the camera, and I'm wearing the Destiny hat. Rob, I may have a larger problem than you. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean that was that's kind of been known for a while like yeah. i play destiny but like i don't own destiny paraphernalia did you see they gave stuff away to people like when they had the um age of triumph or whatever it was uh the final expansion destiny release i know silent tiffany you guys don't really play but the final expansion that they released they actually sent out stuff to fans who had been playing the game since day one like since release day uh and it was actually it was actually kind of cool i mean it was like some shirts or something like that but it was a cool way to reward fans Still better than nothing yeah, but um, no, dude, Doomsday Clock. Oh my God. Okay, so Silent Tiff, did you guys see the uh, six panels that were released from yes, Doomsday Clock? Six pages, yeah. The, the six pages, rather. Yeah, dude. Okay, so like the dude, the reaction in that panel was nuts because it's like like it ends and you realize that Rorschach's narrating it and people are just like, what? Yeah. <laughs> How did he come back? <laughs> they're saying they're going to answer it. We have a few theories in that. I wanted to go deeper into the theories in that one, so we're not just yeah. completely retreading conversations we've already had. Um, right. Yeah, I've heard a few rumblings. I, people I, like, I like personally the theory that Dr. Manhattan, after making the DC Universe, felt bad, learned what a hero could be, and realized Rorschach was the hero of the story, remade him because of that. Because So Doomsday yeah. Clock, for those of you guys who don't know, is the a definitive sequel to Watchmen. And it is takes place eight years? No, it's 1992, uh, so 86. 92. Or 80, yeah. Yeah, 85 to 92, okay. so seven, seven years. years. Yeah. So it's it, like seven or eight years. So it like takes that. place a significant amount of time later. So it's not immediately after. Um, another yeah. another running theory that I will just mention so that people know, the theory, another prominent theory that's been going around is that it's actually Night Owl going, uh, masquerading as Rorschach. Yeah. Um, or that universe is Bruce Wayne, but that, that was just one that I threw in, threw in a bucket and no one seems that to be taking yours, it. That was yours, yeah. No one seems to be taking it? Tiffany had a theory. My random theory was that the, the guy at the end who works for the um, like independent news outlet lost yep. a bunch of weight and became Rorschach. Oh, Seymour. <laughs> See, that would be interesting. Like he literally reads Rorschach's journal and was like, somebody yeah. needs to keep this going. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. Like he takes well, up the mantle. Another really good theory, and one that I one that I thought was kind of cool, was that Manhattan didn't actually kill Rorschach. Oh. Like it looks like he did, but he just kind of whisked him away and teleported him. The what problem is, how do you explain the DC universe? I, don't, I mean, I don't. I have no idea. Well, that that see that would fit into the theory that like Rorschach is actually the question, but like that doesn't work now because Rorschach is. But see, here's the thing though, and here's the other thing to remember. Like Doomsday, or the the whole idea of Doomsday Clock taking place in 1992 takes place before the New 52, yeah. because New 52 references real time, like 2000, 2011, 2012, things like that. It references that point in time. So if we say that the original Watchmen took place in the mid 1980s, we say Doomsday Clock took place in 1992, and then we say New 52 actually happened in 2011, 2012, then it leaves the stage open. You've literally got huge amounts of uh, huge gaps in there in terms of what happened and how it all is going on. So you could easily say that, like, Rorschach is in the New 52 and he is the question. Um, right. Well, they, they've said, I mean, Jeff John said that they're trying to move, they're trying to be so far early, like 20 years before the start of the Watchmen Sup, story. y'all. In, yeah. um, inside, uh, inside of the universe because they want to have time to tell you the conclusion to Watchmen and, a lot, and have time to tell you what's going on in the new universe stuff. They didn't, they didn't want the conclusion to Watchmen to be directly tied to the new 52 or anything like that. They, he said that he wanted you to be able to read the Watchmen then read Doomsday Clock, and as long as you know who Batman and Superman are, you'll be fine. Yeah, so if yeah. you're a human being on this earth, you will know who they are. And I, I think that's literally how he worded it, too. He's like, even my, <laughs> even my 90 year old grandmother knows who Batman is. Who, um, yeah. yeah. But we did get a subscription 27 months yes. in a row. Rob, give us the double splooge now that we're no longer talking about a topic where it won't Yeah, fit. I was going to say, like, we didn't we didn't splooge for the first stuff. Splooge. <laughs> splooge. 
<laughs> yes. Double splooges. Okay. Now, here's my theory on how that Watchmen thing fits in. Uh, I think it all goes back to Flashpoint. All right. Because one of the things that DC has not done is ignored Flashpoint. They haven't treated it like Flashpoint never happened. They're like, oh, yeah, oh. like Flashpoint took place. Things, you know, like the whole event happened. But... Uh, what it looks like they're doing right now, at least as far as I can tell with Rebirth, is they're saying, okay, Flashpoint happened, but it wasn't a real reboot. Things just kind of got shuffled around a little bit. It's just characters got lost, so on and so forth. I could easily see them rolling the Watchmen in and saying, well, see, what happened was when Flashpoint took place, the Watchmen universe got folded in. And all the characters came back. Well, so, I mean, remember that moment at the end of Flashpoint when, like, Barry's going through, and you see the, the Wildstorm universe and a bunch of other yeah. universes are all kind of, like, coalescing into one. You could retcon it at some point, maybe not in... Doomsday Clock, but in some other ancillary book that's like claiming to explain, you could like see that timeline one more time, but this time you see the Minutemen and stuff. Like just a yeah. way to fold in the Watchmen universe and say that maybe it was either part of the DCU in the first place, or that, or that it's at least connected in some way. Because as far as I'm aware, the New Fifty Two did not eliminate the multiverse. No, right? No. It, it wasn't Christ on Infinite Earth where it killed off the multiverse. Okay, I didn't think it was, which means they could easily just say like the Watchmen universe slipped in and nobody knew. Well, and, as far and as see, I know, to me, the multiverse that was never truly been gone. People just forget it exists. Yeah, I mean, Crisis, well, I mean, it yeah, wasn't... killed it, but it was like back pretty immediately. <laughs> well, but see, to me, like, I mean, because because I mean, imagine that. Like, imagine Flashpoint happens. I mean, imagine like. Like, for whatever reason, the Watchmen just exists out there in the DC multiverse, and who knows. Um, but anyway, at, at some point along the line, because it's just one of these different Earths that exist out there, um, when Flashpoint happens, Manhattan becomes aware of the fact that, like, the DC universe exists. Like, you know, that there are heroes on this Earth out there. Mm. Um, and you could easily argue one of the 52 Earths that exists out there is just the Watchmen universe. Right. You know, the Watchmen Earth. And so if, if Manhattan becomes aware, then at that point, it's just a passing curiosity. You know, it's like... Well, I wonder what, I mean, if one of them was powerful enough to, like, change reality, then I wonder how powerful they all are. And then at that point, they just become a science experiment. Then it's like, okay, well, let's see what those guys are. And I wonder if I can mess with things. Because, I mean, it's the idea, because the way that John seems to be building up Manhattan is, is not so much as just this omnipotent god who can do anything, so much as a guy who's just curious about other things out there. You know, like, how far can I push my powers? How far can I push this limit? You know, and if I find these superheroes who are godly powerful, can I change the realities? Like, can I tie this into the whole idea of maybe I'll create life? Well, the first step, first step to creating life is to modify life. So it's, it's kind of cool to, to see how it, how it folds in because – from what he's saying, he was like, I want, I want, I don't want it to be a fight between Superman and Manhattan. I want it to be a conversation. Right. You know? That's and the so fight. Is the, the right yeah, I want them to fight. I exactly. want my payoff, Rob. Remember my, remember I want my them role? to fight. I think it took <laughs> a nine issues. You better give me a solid issue of punching. Well, it better be like a really, really solid conversation. Cause I'm, I'm all up on like a, a, a verbal sparring match. <laughs> and uh, and and a, and a budding of ideologies. I, I'm all I'm all into that idea. And uh, Superman and 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 Doctor Manhattan are the two characters that could definitely like throw a few window shattering you know witticisms and com and uh, and and points of their own personalities. And, and, and I think that'd be really cool. I think everything needs to be perfect. I think yeah. humanity's dumb. <laughs> right. I mean. I, I yeah, there's a lot to unpack from this whole thing because it means so much, and we still like the only thing we've gotten. It's like the X Files movie. We all we've gotten is more questions. Nothing has been answered. It's all we've gotten is we don't know if Doctor Manhattan is the hand at the like at the, at the beginning of time. We don't know if Doctor Manhattan is is the reason why people are going into the 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 the, uh, the Mr. Oz cells. Uh, we don't know if uh, we you know Doctor Manhattan. Oh, give us a split, Rob. Oh, kind Hades. 101. Splooge. For some reason, they're enjoying the delayed splooge. And if you're a subscriber, please spam with that. <laughs> spam that emote. The splooge emote. It's, it's uh, sub. We, we got it kind of approved. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's it's the su it's sub spelled out as a splooge. So. <laughs> Great. Thank no, you. actually, dude, Sal, see, that's a really good point. And what I feel like, see, here's what I think. What I think DC is going to do is they're going to come back. They're going to retcon Infinite Crisis. They're going to retcon Final Crisis yeah. and, I, and and Zero Hour Crisis in Time. So they're literally going to paint this picture where it's like it was all the superheroes popping up in the 1930s. And then it was Crisis on Infinite Earths. And then now. And that's it. Like, nothing else is ever going to have happened before. Because okay. they've never referenced, like, as far as I'm aware, in the stories before, when they're talking about, like, Superman, like, well, for my universe, and yada, 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 they never referenced Infinite Crisis. They never referenced Final Crisis. 
they just reference like things from their universe, you know, from their timeline and the villains yeah. they face. I think it'd be kind of cool to do that. And to literally treat it as though Crisis on Infinite Earths is the only crisis that ever happened because Johns loves the Crisis on Infinite Earths things before that, 1950s comics, which is fine. But I feel like they're going to come back and change all that. And they'll just be like a giant retcon punch. But I can't imagine Manhattan and Superman fighting in any real measurable way because you're talking about God versus Superman. And there's no That's what I was saying. Everyone's like, I can't (laughs) wait to see them fighting it out. I'm like, Manhattan's going to look at Superman and be like, nope. And and that's the fight. That's it. Okay, what if they don't retcon anything? What if instead, like, and, and hear me out because I don't know, but like, what if instead, like, the pages that we see are clearly leading this world to ob- oblivion? You know what I mean? In in the wake of, I'm guessing Rorschach's journal becoming like factual and people finding out that um, Vite orchestrated the whole thing, nuclear war is imminent. Well, and, that's what's happening. That's the beginning of it all. No, I know. I'm just oh, saying. Okay. But in, in, I'm explaining to those who may not have seen it. I'm uh, I'm, I'm leading up to uh, it. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, but in the wake of that, what if Manhattan returns in time as it, as it's occurring and just kind of stops time there and like leaves it sitting, discovers the DC universe, which is like the polar opposite of his world where he's just like, I don't understand. We literally sacrificed everything to save these people and they hate us for it. Well, and, they and they hate each it. other. Right. And then he comes to the DC universe where he's like, and you have someone like Superman who is essentially like me and Batman, who is essentially like Adrian. And they are like, you know, gods and heroes here. And I don't understand. And I'm going to figure out why this is happening yeah. and, and how I could have fixed it. Yeah, yeah that it, works. Because it could That's be the doom, cool. the, like, like you said, the doomsday clock, the, the sequel to Watchmen is just the end of the earth. It's literally just humanity's destroyed. You know, like the world that Dr. Manhattan left behind, it, it, it kills itself. And yeah. like within that world, maybe like there, maybe there's a Schuster and a, and a Siegel in that universe and they create Superman. And he's like, this guy, he's like, he's the real deal, you know, like, or maybe, or, but basically that this world that we're looking at is not the DC universe. We're seeing right. the Watchmen universe and we're watching They're it reading die. reading the comic of it almost. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, Domo King has movie. cheered to let us know that Batman would be Doctor Manhattan, M- Doctor Manhattan, due to prep time. Oh. Well, <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's had okay. plenty of time. Okay, so so to answer somebody's question in terms of Dark Knight's Metal uh, confirming Final Crisis, it does, but it doesn't. It references Batman Rest in Peace, Batman R.I.P. I'm sorry, the, I'm sorry. It references uh, the return of Bruce Wayne, yeah. where he travels through time to get back to the modern day, which only happened because of Final Crisis. But it doesn't mean they can't come back and change that. So I guess as it stands now, until they change it, sure, I guess it references Final Crisis. And they may not. I mean, oh, it does, Tiffany does it have... about the Omega the, sanction the, and how, the, the like, crises. Dark Side snapped him there and everything. Like, Oh, they, it does. That's right. They, the crises <laughs> actually do get referenced quite a bit once yeah, the characters really. are aware of it. It's just like the multiverse. The multiverse yeah. doesn't exist until they're like, oh shit, there's a multiverse out here. And they give yeah. some lame reason how they're aware of it, but they're aware of it. I mean, uh, in the Convergence, most of the characters just remembered all the crises. Yeah. And that's yeah. that timeline is still valid. So Yeah, but I don't think, I mean, I don't think Convergence is, I think they're sweeping Convergence under the rug. <laughs> oh, no, they, they are. They, what I'm saying is oh, that's they just undid an example it. of them learning of everything once again. Right. Yeah. And, Hold on, when did they undo Convergence? When Superman got rebirthed, because oh they, yeah, because they had convergence Superman who's pre or post crisis pre Flashpoint Superman, but then when he meets up with Mick Spit, Mick Spitlick and then they merge him with his previous self, Jonathan was born on Telos in the Batcave. Yeah, now he's born in the Fortress of Solitude by Superman. That's um, right. So we have another cheer that says they're, and this is a good one. They wonder if Earth Four, the pastiche of the Watchmen, pastiche. will be involved. Pastiche. 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 Mm. No, I, I kind of like Tiffany's theory because it could literally, because I mean, all the 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 Watchmen characters were designed to be a more grounded, uh, grounded, mimicked version of like the DC superheroes. Like take away the powers, and then those are the those are basically Watchmen characters. Yeah. And so like that that's kind of a cool thing because it could literally be Manhattan who's just like, I wonder how many other versions of us there are out there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then stumbles across the DC universe. That is kind of a cool Right. So I wanted to and, bring oh do you have something to any? Oh no, I was just gonna say just on the heels of that, just that if you're gonna also want to address the crises, maybe he's been watching them and he's like, I don't get it. And every single instance when this world should be over it saves itself and yes. it comes back <laughs> and it comes back and it's good 
you know, um, and people quick, still have faith. Yeah. Oh, no, uh, we just need a splooge. And I, sure. I want to agree with yes, you. Yes, we do. Yes. Yes, we do. Robert? Palabra 11, you asked for some love. <laughs> well, you shall have it in the form of a splooge. <laughs> Can we never refer to you splooging as somebody asking you for love? Yeah, he asked for love. <laughs> he asked for love. <laughs> um, so what I wanted to ask following that Hello. for you guys is, yeah. so another big announcement that came out of this, um, and this is going to lead into our discussion of DC Metal eventually. They, these will sound similar, but they announced that there would be no tie-ins. There would be no yeah. additional books. There would be no uh, a Teen Titans book where the Teen Titans are fighting against the, the Watchmen. N none of this stuff. None of this stuff is going to be happening. Yeah. Um, so what this That's makes great. me wonder is how do you feel about this? Because I... they're doing an event right now. Doomsday Clock could have very easily been a giant event for DC, but Jeff oh. Johns wants it to be a 12-story, all-inclusive, just that story that we're telling the sequel to The Watchmen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you feel about that, especially coming off of the heels? Because uh, th this is a good because uh, we're coming off the heels of Secret Empire, which was a line wide event, onto mm -hmm. the heels of DC Metal, which is also a line wide event, but handled in a much more compact manner, which we'll be talking about. And yep. now we're doing Doomsday Clock, which is an event of one book. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's fantastic because I hate tie-ins, and I think that Jeff Johns knows that. When you, like, number one, an event can get unruly. Number two, he's probably taking a look over the other side of the fence and going, like, people are really unhappy, whether they like Secret Empire or not, with, like, how it got away from itself. Yeah. And I think he's, like, I, I, th I think he doesn't want to dilute the Watchmen brand. Despite yeah. the fact that he wants to exploit it, I think he's, like, if I if, if I start, like, if I, if I do, like, a Rorschach series or, like, a, you know, a Night Owl series, if I do before Watchmen again, I'm going to get, like, hell for it. And I, I think, think that, you know, I, I, with quality control, like, if I know it's me and, like, Gary Frank, we're going to make something amazing, and that's all I can guarantee. <laughs> yeah, I think he's yeah. a little afraid of... of um following up Watchmen. I think he wants to try to show respect for it while at the same time folding in his own work. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, leave it to Jeff Johns to feel like he could follow up Watchmen, first of all. Right. <laughs> Go ahead, Rob. <laughs> Rob? What? 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 We got a for Jordan. Oh, we got a splooge! <laughs> <laughs> for Jordan. It oh. didn't ping for some weird reason, but it did happen. I'm going to get it to re-ping, so go ahead, Rob. Jordan. My friend, splooge. <laughs> but um, <laughs> so I definitely agree that I think uh, Jeff Johns is, is trying to tread carefully here and show this property the respect that it deserves. I mean, he clearly understands that by the artist he's selected, oh, yeah. um, uh, by the fact that he he's had some restraint with it to some degree, and by some of the language that he used in the conference. You know, making uh, it. it seem less of like him rewriting what's happening and him just kind of being like what if we did a thought exercise and saw what happened afterward you know what i mean yeah. like i, yeah. I think yeah. respect's a big thing for him right now well i mean well, if, you, also... if you listen to the way he talked about it, he said that he he because uh, he even admitted he, he said before watchman was not a horrendous thing but it didn't <laughs> feel like watchman those writers yeah. were allowed to do what they wanted to do with the characters he applauds that but that's not what he wanted to do he went through and before even writing this wrote the rules of watchmen to make it be a watchman thing the nine panel layout the character driven instead of plot driven you know various things that made watchmen what it is what made watchmen special so he can try to recapture that instead of just telling his own story with the characters mm. yeah well it's also uncharted water I mean, you're talking about taking a title that has the seen neither hide nor hair in all of DC's landscape uh, for over the course of the last, what, like 30 years, almost yeah. 40 years, you know, and you're talking about taking that title and rolling it in. So, like, no one has touched the Watchmen since Alan, and he was the one who originally did it, and then that was it. It was just this 12-issue yeah. story that he did, and then it was done, and they've never been referenced since. And, well, I guess there's before Watchmen, but that doesn't really count. <laughs> well, they're not counting. And so, he even said you don't. Yeah, they're not. They're not counting it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And right. so because of that, like, like folding it in is a huge gamble because you know, for people, for all the people who never read the original Watchmen series, this is a new IP. It might yeah. as well be, you know, for the value that it has for people who are reading comics now that never read them before. And so they're literally, this is their first exposure to the Watchmen. So I think that one, giving a 12-issue story is smart. 
I think because it literally just keeps people totally contained into this story. Uh, it'll be told as a story that takes place before everything that goes on now, so you don't have to have read everything in DC Rebirth to understand what's happening at the moment. A time will come when that will change, and you'll have to, just you know, when the characters presumably get rolled in. And then rolling Superman into it is an even smarter thing, because one, it grabs the fans who have always wanted to see Superman versus Dr. Manhattan, and then it grabs the people who are like, I know who Superman is, you know, like I've, I'll read any story that he's in, and then they'll read that, you know, to talk, to see what his involvement in the Watchmen universe is. So mm -hmm. it's a, it's the probably the smartest way to roll the Watchmen in. And, and I, that's why I say I absolutely love it. I mean, reading Jeff Johns' Green Lantern, you know, having read Jeff Johns' Teen Titans, reading, you know, reading the, you know, Jeff Johns' Run on Flash, reading all these stories, while I would say that it would be cool to have some action, um, I think that seeing Jeff Johns write a 12-issue story that's basically all just conversation for the most part with some action thrown in, I think would actually be pretty incredible. Well, I mean, that's the so watch. I'm, I'm, the watch I'm pretty excited. is never known for its fighting. Yeah, that it's action. It's dialogue. As a matter of fact, yeah. if you, I mean, for those of you guys who have only seen the movie and have not read the book, a lot of the fight scenes that are in that movie aren't even in the book. Like, no. they added those in for the sake of the movie because of, the, well, it's a superhero movie. We need to have That's this yeah. really awesome prison fight scene that no one's right. ever yeah. heard of. <laughs> no, you never see, you never see, uh, as far as I'm aware, you never see Adrian Veidt actually beat the crap out of the comedian. Nope. Like, it's just, they show There's up on no the scene and the comedian got thrown out. Like, the no. comedian yeah. and, and Adrian don't have, like, super strength. Com uh, Adrian appears to have, like, super speed in the movie. That's not a thing. Like, yeah. all... They're just regular people. The only character with any sort of powers is Dr. Manhattan. Is right. Manhattan. Yeah. But there is 100% more pirates in the book. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got me uh, for a minute. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> oh, right. Those, yeah, those the black sail tail thing. Yeah. <laughs> the sub stories, man. Those things are amazing. <laughs> yeah, they, well, they changed the ending of the movie. Um, in the uh, trying to because I've read it in so long. Is anyone like got the differences between the ending? One's a giant squid monster, and one's like a it's, blowing it up. Yeah, yeah. the whole the thing is that like they monster. they that uh, Vite Industries basically creates or built or like grows a giant like fake alien that has like a psychic attack that kills everybody in 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 like yeah. within the radius of his attack on Manhattan. And, and that the idea is that like humanity comes together because they have to like join forces against a threat beyond the stars and so yeah. nuclear attack is is meaningless yeah right yeah. ironically by the way it's also a huge ripoff of an outer limits episode and uh dave gibbons mentioned that to alan moore he's like yo dude the ending is uh, the outer limits and moore's like oh is it oops and gibbons challenged him he's like come up with a better ending you don't want to be you don't want anyone to say you ripped off the outer limits so Moore's reaction, apparently, according to the interview that I read, Moore said he was like too lazy and tired to do anything about it. He just put in an Outer Limits reference after they after the big attack. Like yeah. they're watching the Outer Limits at the end of the book, and and so he's like, "There, see, I got behind it. I I got in front of it. Ah ha ha ha." Yeah. And so yeah, like that was their solution. But yeah, it's just a big squid monster, and it's really like an it's a haunting and amazing image by the it way is. of the squid monster and everything. But it like, is. But like in a sense, like they do change somewhat the reason that Manhattan leaves because in the book he leaves because he's just like, if I leave, then humanity truly has to work together. Yeah. And in the movie, he leaves because he's like, "Well, I have to not be here so that you fear that I'll always come back and destroy you." <laughs> right, exactly. They they turn him into the enemy as opposed to Manhattan being like, Manhattan leaves for his own reasons in the book. Yeah. Like, ah, screw this, bye. Yeah. Well, he gets bored. He wants to explore mankind and humanity, and, and he life. wants to. Uh, he says he wants to. He might. He's. He claims he wants to create some life. Yeah. Which yeah. is why ever. Which is why when we first see Manhattan in any reference for Reborn or Rebirth, Rebirth. we're like. He created the DC universe because right. the last. I don't know why, but that's just another life. fan theory, just like our Mr. Oz one. Because yeah. because Rob's like, no, they dropped all these hints. I'm like, Rob, they didn't. That was us fans going like, Mr. Oz is Osman Osmandius. <laughs> yeah, literally, like, remember that three Joker theory? They've not done anything with it. They are. Everybody, they are. It's actually that's the next story arc yeah. we're supposed yeah. to be doing. The it's next story arc. Well, hang on. Zero reference to it besides them saying that. Right, but honestly, like the the language that Johns uses in the panel indicates to me that like maybe he didn't create the DC universe because he mentions like the idea of him wanting to remove humanity from it a little bit, but like yeah. that Tim like playing with toys that are already there. So yeah. I don't know. It was just again, this is a language thing. Sometimes you pick the wrong word, so right. it could be you, intentional you never... or could not. 
I, I don't know. I'm happy either way. I like the idea of Manhattan discovering the DC universe and then just kind of screwing with it. And that's why right. you haven't seen any Manhattanisms right. since or before that. But I also love the idea of them answering what the big blue, because it is a big blue hand at the, at the end of the universe. And it's like, mm -hmm. it would be kind of cool. I guess that'd be fine. You could do worse than the greatest graphic novel of all time. No, it's true. <laughs> it's true. And I got to tell you, word, the... you could do worse than yeah, the greatest thing ever. I mean, really, like if it's like, oh, shit, the guy who created the DC universe is only a character from the most celebrated graphic novel of all time. It's like saying, you know, like, oh, I ripped off Citizen Kane. Like, well, I guess you could have done worse. Yes. You know, like, it's it's undisputedly the greatest film of all time by a panel of people who make these kinds of claims. Right. Sure, you might disagree. Now, you? <laughs> yeah. But you, sure, you might disagree, but, like, <laughs> whatever, it's still Watchmen. It'll be there long after you're gone. Yeah, no, it will. Yeah. 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 But regardless, like I am, I am wildly excited to I see am, what happens. Yeah. Well, I have not that, been this excited for a story in a long time. Yeah. You that know what this what, does do, though. I'll say this because my big concern was that. So DC Metal, for those of you guys who don't know, is an event that is going until February. Doomsday yeah. yeah. Clock is going from December to January, and I openly, my big concern was that uh, they were gonna like stall out one of them to make it make sense of the other one, like plot wise. Mm -hmm. And other than um, a weird issue that's apparently going to be happening in The Flash, and I'll explain that in a minute, um, oh, involved in DC Metal, it looks like they can 100% have them unrelated to their entirety as to what is going on. Because DC and Metal can be happening, and if Doomsday Clock is mostly about the Watchmen, you really don't got to explain much. We lost Sal. Where did Sal go? I don't know. He left. Well... Um, Sal says, you know what? I'm done. I'm, I'm done with this. I'm done with this discussion. <laughs> I am moving on. Yep. Sal says, bye. The, I think Doctor, to do. uh, clearly Dr. Manhattan or, or Mr. Oz took him and he put him in a cell. Oh, oh you're in a cell? Yeah. Frickin' no. It literally, it like, it just went, I'm like, what the hell just happened? It just yeah, man, turned off Skype, Skype for no people reason. Like, people are like, RIP, Sal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened. I'm so sorry, anyway, I'm just saying is I'm happy to see that it looks like DC Metal is going to be the event. Doomsday yeah. Clock is going to be something separate, not wholly and entirely yeah. incorporated. Yeah. The Oz thing is apparently its own Superman event. Like, yeah. it's just to, just to, like, I don't know, applaud DC for having so many crazy things happening and keeping them separate. Oh and if God. you aren't yeah. interested in the three Jokers, you don't got to get Superman. And if you aren't interested in what's happening in DC Metal, you don't have to go do anything else, which leads me to my next discussion. DC Metal, Scott Snyder came out and said, you don't have, a, it is a tie-in event but you only have two books every week. They have perfectly planned it. So you will only ever have two books. He week. knows, like, Snyder and Johns are the best people to be heading up an event because yeah. they have, because they know what we want, or at the very least, they know what we'll buy, yeah. you know? We'll and buy they, the event if you don't give me eight books a week. Exactly. Yeah. They know that we are, our money's limited, and they're like, and we want it all to come on this side of the fence. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's going there because... Dark Knight's Metal is fascinating, even if you don't agree with it, but it's also wholly separate from what they're doing over at Superman and wholly oh, yeah. different from what they're doing over at the Watchmen thing. And it's just, but but they all feel important. Like they're, the, the Rebirth has actually managed to to accomplish this amazing thing where everything, it's it's like what Marvel said when they were like, every week it's an event. <laughs> no, it really wasn't do, Marvel. <laughs> yeah. But like, but they're saying that, and it's like, yeah, but we don't care about any of them, and then none of them are impactful because you're gonna read, you're gonna undo them. Everything that DC's doing feels like it matters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, dude. And like, dude, that dude, that is exactly it. So, like, like you read super, like Superman Reborn comes out, yeah. and it's like, okay, I have to read Superman Reborn, not because DC offered Marvel's obligatory and it will change the industry forever, <laughs> but because. But because of the fact that it's like this is probably going to change Superman forever, yeah. and like you read Dark Knights or Dark Knight Metal, and you're like, I have to read this because yeah. like it's going to change Batman forever, yeah. or at the very least, it'll change DC because now we'll get this negative multiverse, and like there'll be stories on that that I might dig. Oh, big I mean, time! Like, uh, real quick, yeah. tied into the negative multiverse, there was a, 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 I can't even find it now. There was a cheer that was asking. Oh, here it is from Santangio. If what if the Injustice universe is a part of the Dark Multiverse? I'm down for that. Dude, I think that's that, a would, idea. that would work. That yeah. would work for me. Yeah. I mean, the dark multiverse is literally a multiverse where, like, everything that can go wrong has gone wrong. Right. Like, that's basically <laughs> what it sounds like. Isn't that what injustice is? <laughs> it is. Isn't it, it is. Isn't it weird, though, the crime syndicate don't come from that universe? Yeah. Well, okay. Uh, someone but, asked okay. me about that. Think about this. 
they are not inherently bad. They, it's like the Sinestra situation. They, their goal is to like keep everyone safe. Just their method is murder anyone in the way. <laughs> I don't know. I, they're they're like you... Rick's flying machine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't buy that. Like Owl Man or oh. Ultraman have anyone else's interests but their own in mind. Oh, you know, Sal, I, by the way. Well, you know what I. You know what I buy into, Sal. Uh oh. What's you know what that? I buy into. What is that? Rob? You want to know what I buy into, Sal? Uh, is it about uh, that silly kitty? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> I buy into splooges. Ew. <laughs> yes, I do. Splooge. Thank you. <laughs> so the magical splooge. <laughs> to, to tie into what you were saying about how this event is like, it, it feels impactful. Right. Yeah. It matters. So we got it. We had a moment, and don't worry, Rob, I'm not going to reveal anything we're not supposed to talk about. But whenever we get to a oh, call, yeah. the writer for Green Lantern is someone that we are friendly with and we'll chat with. Yes. So sometimes they'll reveal things that to us that are were going to happen and they don't happen. And sometimes he reveals things that are happening or what he wanted to do but can't do, that kind of a thing. But one thing he said to me struck a chord because I asked him. I was like, I, I mean, you don't have to give me the full thing behind it. I'm just curious. The metal that is mentioned in the gods, the new God storyline that just happened in Hell and Jordan, is that the same metal? And he says that is the intention. It's not supposed oh. to be a tie-in, but you're supposed it's to feel – like the event is impactful and across the universe. That's great. And, and that got me thinking. I'm like, that happened in, De in Detective Comics. That is now going in on a Nightwing because Nightwing's like, yeah, that thing that just happened to me and Nightwing must die, that was a part of this. And, I, and that got me thinking. I'm like, it's one of those deals where if you don't read everything, you're like, oh, that's okay. I could still read a core plot. But if you do read everything, you're like, oh, oh, and the metal's here, and the metal's here, and the metal's yeah. here. Oh, my God, the metal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It yeah. actually is it, – it's covert genius because it allows it, – like, if you just slap a Civil War logo on every, like, poorly selling book and try to trick people into buying something because they're completists, yeah. you're going to piss them off and you're going to make them gun-shy to events. Yeah. But if you – Act like everything's part of a grand scheme, or an or an all or like you know a complete plan, and there are breadcrumbs that don't even necessarily lead anywhere, mm -hmm. uh, but they're there. You know, like the nth metal being in a Green Lantern book, you are going to quietly capture extra sales for books that wouldn't normally be picked up by these completists who are like, I gotta get Dark Knight's medal. It's about the medal. Who has the metal in it? Uh, this <laughs> random book references the metal. It's got to come into my fold. And like, hey, right. maybe they'll also read the book and enjoy it. But like, at the very least, we'll also get like two ninety nine out of that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and then no, the fact exactly that you combine it. that with the fact that the only core titles, there's only two a week. To me, just I want more. Secret right. Empire. Like, I know Rob didn't read the tie-ins, but I was reading the book and the tie-ins. And yeah. every week I dreaded it because I'm like, there's four goddamn Secret Empire yeah. books and I don't give a shit about any of them. But like right? with the metal, I'm reading the two and I'm like, give me more. I want more no. metal. But you don't yeah. want more. That's no, I don't. Yeah, they, that's what I'm saying. They leave you, they leave you they wanting, leave you they wanting more. more. If they gave me five metal tie-ins every week, I would start doing the same thing where I'm like, God damn it, I don't give a care about the metal. Prioritizing. Yeah. You know, but they, yeah. but they also have managed to like. Let's say you're a person who doesn't normally read a tie-in, right? Because there's too many of them typically, right? Like, sure, I'm gonna buy you know DC Metal. Cool, great. There's only one tie-in. I can take a chance on that. Yeah, yeah. I, I only and I have, did. Yeah, like I, I, mean, I can take a chance on that. I, I think they that. haven't crossed any books that are over two ninety nine yet, have they? I, I think a maximum no. you're looking at four, eight bucks spent a week. Most weeks you're looking at six to seven. Right, right. except for the Dark Knight's Metal, I think that's more. Is that the ones 99? that are monthly, I think, are three ninety nine. The ones that like, I think they they increase the they increase the price of the monthly titles. I thought. Mm -hmm. I, I'm Did not they? sure. What I'm saying is, you're at least looking at at, at at a best case scenario six bucks a week. Worst case scenario, eight dollars a week. Like the yeah. problem yeah. with Secret Empire was, if this wasn't your job, which it isn't for anybody watching in the chat, it's not your job to read comic books. You don't no. have twenty five dollars to put to Secret Empire every week. <laughs> yeah no i mean that's and that's that's kind of the thing is it makes it it makes it a far more complete story um for for jai who asked the question what i consider dc rebirth an event i would consider an event only in so far as it's like a giant retcon 
Uh, but it's not it's not an event in the traditional sense. Like an event in the traditional sense is what everybody's been saying so far, where it's like the original civil war, like superheroes are fighting each other. But you could have just read the seven issues and been fine, and that would have just been it. Um, but you still had to basically read the core event in order to understand what's going on. DC Rebirth has no core event. There's no core series of things no. taking place. It's just a mishmash of stories involving each individual character. But that is the beauty of it, is that yeah. if you only care about Batman, you read Batman and Detective, and that's it. You buy two comics a week, and you're done. You know, you can just read Dark Knight's Metal and still just get the core story and be okay yeah. and understand yeah. everything that's going on. Like that, that to me is the nature of what does make it so great. It's because it's literally just self-contained stories. Superman Reborn, sure, crossover over the Superman family, but you don't have to read all that stuff. I mean, no. there's one, there's one Aftermath comic for Trinity, for Supergirl, for Superwoman, and for Superman, and that's it. That's yeah. all you that's all you need. And if you don't read those, it doesn't impact you at all. Like, you know, the next issue after that, Trinity number eight immediately had the aftermath of uh of whatchamacallit, of the Superman Reborn or Trinity number seven. Yep. And then you read issue number eight and they're on the hunt for Raz al Ghul or for, you know, Mr. Oz or whatever it was. You know, mm -hmm. you immediately just jump back into it again. So you don't have to read all the tie-ins. And that is what I think makes an effective event. So I agree. We, um, real quick, we had a, a cheer that was asking what you're vaping, Rob. Uh, Velvet Cloud Vapor. There you go. Okay. <laughs> um, but no, this actually reminded me because they're saying, because what I love about the metal event is it's an event if I'm reading everything, but it's not if I don't care. And if you think yeah. about it, that's what Rebirth was. Now, the actual definition of an event, because somebody asked me this a while ago, and I kind of looked it up to see what the definitions were. There are two major things that happen, well, three major things that happen in comic books. There is the line wide, of, the line wide what's going on. And that's the rebirth. That's you have this is happening, New 52 rebirth. This is happening to your comic book, but it's not an event. You don't have to read everything. This is just like a new starting point. Marvel does yeah. that too. All new, all different Marvel. Uh, Marvel Now 1, Marvel Now 2.0. Uh, they all have the same name basically. All new Marvel, all new, all different. Either way, rebirth is the same thing as that. Now, your second thing is a crossover. The button was a crossover, it wasn't an event. It was Batman no. Flash, Batman Flash. You know, uh, the Lazarus contract is another great example. It was Teen Titans, Titans, and there was one more, but it was a crossover. Uh, Deathstroke. It didn't yeah. tie in every book. Now, mm -hmm. an event, an event takes place across your entire universe. So well, it typically has its own title as well. Yes, typically does. Like So DC Metal is the first actual event that I think DC has done since For Convergence. Yeah. 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 I mean, that is true. I mean, you had smaller stuff like Night of the Monster Men, Superman Reborn, but those yeah. were relegated to like the like to, to those crossovers. core titles. Yeah, those are crossovers. crossovers. Yeah. yeah. Technically, yeah, so, Nightfall was well, a crossover. Wasn't it? Like Maximum Carnage was a crossover. Yeah. And like these are yeah. these are like these the, we call them events now because we have no other word for them because they were like 27 yeah. parts or whatever. Yeah. The Onslaught Saga was an event and you had to put it together on your own. <laughs> that and wasn't that even an event. There was no Onslaught. <laughs> Like, I don't even That's know true. what the hell to do. Age of Apocalypse, there was at least an o Alpha and Omega, but, like, w yeah. screw you if you want to understand what's happening by just buying books called Age of Apocalypse. <laughs> yeah, it was nuts. Um, it, was, but, it was crazy. What I'm loving about what DC's doing right Ooh, now. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Just League versus Suicide Squad. Yeah, I that was a that. crossover, too. That wasn't even an event. Yeah. No, that had its own book. Huh? That was but, called but Justice was, League versus Suicide Squad. No, but it did cross over into the Justice League and the actual Suicide Squad books. No, no, no. It, it only crossed, crossed over in the sense that you had preludes. Right, you had it didn't the, have like tie-ins or anything. Yeah, no, it didn't have tie-ins. Yeah. You had the in the Suicide Squad, it was there were tie-ins. Yeah, in the no, 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 I don't no. think there were tie-ins. Yeah, tie you like, had the you're thinking about the were, Justice League of America stuff. They did they did uh, their own little rebirth for each of those characters. Because there was that uh, there were those tie-ins for Justice League versus Suicide Squad where we find out like the first mission of the original Suicide Squad that Amanda no, Waller that's, on and stuff. That's, that's, that's the yeah. yeah they that's had a suicide. one. They had an Alpha and Omega to that series, and then they crossed over Justice League into Suicide Squad for. Were those they? Yeah. Okay. No, those, were, those, weren't, those weren't Alpha. No, they weren't Alpha and Omegas. They were preludes. One yeah. was Suicide Squad. One was Justice League, and then you went into the event. Okay, because I only it. bought the main series, and then I bought the hardcover, which collects everything. Yes. But even then, the hardcover only had like two or three extra <laughs> issues. Uh, oh, I will yeah. get to yours in a minute, Black Kermit, because it's a huge donation thing. So let me give me a second of that. Um, the, so the point I was trying to make, though, is mm -hmm. a while ago, DC admitted to the fact that the comic book industry is changing. Like, we're no longer able to sell 200,000 books, and we're no longer able to get people to buy hundreds upon hundreds of books in every event. That's just... that's. And uh, my theory behind that is the comic book industry is changing because there is so much more entertainment to consume 
right now. Mm. You don't yeah. have just, hey, I'm going to go play in a treehouse outside and read my comic book. No, <laughs> it's video games, phones, tablets. I mean, movies. Yeah. Everything is mm -hmm. an event, Us. and everything requires you to be there. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Us? No, no. You're yeah. You're not wrong. I mean, there's there's a doc. I mean, not even taking into account like the whole comic bus. There's a documented history. Like even when comics were selling, like gangbusters because yeah. of you know speculation there's still a documented trend of the sales of comics going down as other forms of entertainment begin to rise yeah yes. so yeah. no yeah that's 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 just the nature what, of things. I mean, what, gone yeah. are the days of Superman selling 500,000 issues a month. <laughs> like, <laughs> those, days, those days only existed for a brief period. They did. And then like they are never years. coming. They are the salad days. Everybody. Right. Well, yeah. and, and, the, and the industry is responding <laughs> accordingly. That's why collectibles are now a thing. Characters yeah. are yeah. being looked at as how can we make them popular so that they want to sell more merchandise? How do we get the nerds to buy their shit? You know? Oh, I know. We'll take a character they like and then mold it into very cheap, shitty looking plastic. Well, it, it, and not it. only that, but they're, they're creating the chases. Uh, well, you know what I mean? Like, the reason Superman was selling 500,000 copies was people were buying sometimes upwards of 10 copies because they're like, this is going to be worth something someday. Yeah. So now yeah. collectibles are creating that same stigma by being like, there's only like like 5,000 of these figures. You better oh, I mean, get I, one I, now. I buy the Sideshow collectibles and everything has like, there's only 500 of these in existence. There's only 1,000 yeah. yeah. of these in existence. And you go look at the internet and they go way up in value. Like the Dr. Doom, yeah. one of their first ones is worth five grand now. It's so amazing. But that, that being said, those look awesome and a lot of work goes into them. Yeah. Yeah. These yeah. Funko but, Pops make me crazy because they're cheap and stupid. I have both of those because I'm a collector. But you love those and I have to mail them to your house, for God's sake. Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I, by the way, I think I'm just going to mail, because I have to mail Rob's comics, I think I'm going to mail both your your Pops and his comics in, some, in one box. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. He comes to the house like every yeah. other day. Yeah, he yeah, comes over all the time. Yeah. Anyway, what I was getting at is what I'm liking <laughs> is knowing this, DC has admitted that this is changing. This is, something's changing. Yeah. And yeah. instead of giving us event after event after event which is what marvel's yeah. doing which is what i'm disliking they're realizing that going people just if you like batman superman that's what you like here's a crossover here's batman flash here's a crossover and instead of making big events and making a big stink out of it and putting titles on them rebirth had a lot of stuff going on you don't yeah. need to know if you had read detective and action comics all the rebirth ideas were popping up all over the place and they're doing yeah. that again with metal. Metal is popping up all over the place, but you don't need to buy it all. It's just fun yeah. as the as the completionist to see it happening, to be able to go. Yeah. Oh, because Rob hit me up. What's the prelude to metal? And I'm like, dude. So and detective, they got an orb. They're talking about how it's going to give the answers to the metal over in Green Lanterns. They're talking about metal. At the time, I didn't. I wasn't 100 percent if it was the same metal, but I was like, it'll be a weird coincidence if it's not the same metal. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So I'm looking at these numbers. And just uh, just on detective, more fun, action, and adventure comics, just on those four. In January 1939, they sold 709,000 copies together. Yeah. All right. And then then like uh, like famous funnies that month by itself sold 350,000 copies. Mm -hmm. So like that was definitely the heyday back then. I mean, because people were buying them organically. Right. But well, no, yeah. I just, you, I just you have, have to, I didn't look that to up. Do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nothing else to do. Well, and that's but, what I'm saying. But, Comic books are still fun, but it's still reading. And I mean, I hate to say it because I read books and I read comics and. Is they're going away. Everyone's getting all their information digestibly. No one reads the newspaper anymore. You read the internet for fast, quick, digestible information. Comic books are becoming yeah. fast, more indigestible information. And the, and the fact is, comic books are also not a dollar anymore. You're getting a magazine that, for me, takes me seven to eight minutes to read the average comic book. That's three mm -hmm. bucks. That's kind of a waste, depending on how you look at it. You know? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. you also remember, like back then, back in the in the 30s and 40s, it was all the rage to have anthology comics. A lot of people don't know Action Comics was originally an anthology series. It wasn't until Superman was just crazy popular that they were like, okay, well, then whatever characters are popular, we'll give them their own titles. The ones who aren't, they're going to go away, and then we'll turn Action Comics into a Superman story. But, like, Adventure Comics, more fun, like, all that stuff, they were – and you would buy one of those, and you would get 40 pages. Yeah. And it would just be, like, uh, like you know, four different stories. I mean, that's how it was with all that stuff. Wiz Comics and Flash Comics, and those were all anthology series. So you got your money worth. I mean, imagine that now, guys. Imagine that, like, like for those of you guys in the chat, you go to the comic book store every month. And you pay two ninety nine for forty pages of comics with four stories per comic. Yeah. Like imagine that. Like I mean that'd be that'd be insane. Like yeah. that would that would Amazing. outsell everything else. Like if oh, yeah. Marvel tried well, to redo that, you know, but it didn't work. <laughs> remember when I mean like everybody tells the story or Stan Lee likes to tell a story about how it's like the Justice League book and the Avengers books and how those books usually outsold Batman and Superman and or Captain America and et cetera, because you you only had so many like nickels and you knew that you were getting like four superheroes for the price of one. 
That's all. No, no, no. no, no, no. We got two donations. (laughs) We got two cheers that I'm I'm trying to like time to go through. Oh no. Okay. So while he's working on that, just to bring it back around to the just the idea of DC metal, what it's doing right, and the fact that it's just something that uh, earlier that uh, Sal said that it feels like everything's really important, right? Like look at DC metal itself. Like they're doing something brand new. They're totally changing things right. And then on top of it all, you have Scott Snyder teasing a character we haven't seen in a very long time from an imprint that is long gone, being Sandman. Right now, go back to New York Comic Con where we're told that in 2018 in August they're going to relaunch Vertigo. Yeah, and it's just like it's amazing how all these things are coinciding. Whether or not that's going to lead into anything, who knows? But it's just it makes everything feel just so important right now. Just yeah. like you said. Yeah, it makes it yeah. everything no, it works together because because it's it's New Fifty Two kind of like the way I guess it should have been done because I didn't I didn't I wasn't on the ground floor when New Fifty Two launched. Mm-hmm. I came after the fact. And so for, for a lot of people, from what I've read and from what I understand, like DC launched New 52 and they're like, here's all the books, you know? And then it was just like, read what you want to. And it was just yep. so much coming at you so fast. And you just kind of had to go with each individual book and just try to develop as they went along. But this is a lot slower and the payoff is working. Like it is effective. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's kind of crazy because they're treating DC Rebirth like a comic book story in and of itself, mm-hmm. which is actually pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, well, that's okay, why so I'm going to go to these two uh, cheers. Uh, your friend Will says he only planned to get the main metal issues, but the Dark Knight one shots are cheap and easy to pick up. Yeah. So, and, and oh, that's, that's what I'll say about having only, only one extra one a week. You have time for that. And the big one that we, we pushed over, I don't mean to derail the conversation, so you can answer this whenever. I was wondering how you guys feel about the reboots happening so quickly now. Do you guys think that DC and Marvel are just backing themselves into a corner where they feel like they need to reboot again and again? Anyways, I'm just wondering what you guys think of the publisher saying, well, looks like things are getting messy. Time for a reboot. Yeah, uh, I always, I, I don't like reboots on a fundamental level, but... I understand the motivation for them. It's like whenever you're doing anything and you're, you know, if you're doing something creative and you just think to yourself, like, this is not going the way I want to. I just want to scrap it all and start over from scratch. Mm -hmm. It's way easier to build and to start from zero than it is to take someone's mess and make something great out of it. Um, Or perceptually, that's what you that's what you're, you're you're doing when you're inheriting like decades worth of continuity. But I love continuity and I love legacy and I love the concept of. Uh, a shared collective lived in long-standing universe that has history and roots. And so, uh, you know, I, I think, I, I think that reboots are technically indicative of, a, of an inherent desire to kind of like go the easy way, but sometimes it's inevitable. I mean, like I, I can't argue with the pro with the, with, with hat, with the results. I mean, like, the New 52 was some of the best sales the DC's ever had in their lives. Yeah, it was huge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It changed the kind of book industry because Marvel was like, we're never going to reboot. And then they half-assed reboot like four times in the last five years. Yeah, yeah. They, reboot their, they reboot their status quos, which is equally frustrating. And it's like once you catch on to that trend, it's hard to read Marvel again. Because yeah. like I, I remember jumping into New Avengers, uh, basically back in the comics when New Avengers was launched. And I was like, cool and we had these you know because marvel's been the same timeline since 19 whatever it's been you know it, like well, you don't need to start from zero you you just start wherever it along the timeline but after like event after event after event the status quo was, would completely shift and i'm like oh like i I, always, I was always under the apprehension that like things were actually going in some direction like the New Avengers turned to Civil War. Civil War turned to Dark Reign. Dark Reign turned to Secret Invasion, et cetera, et cetera. I actually inverted those, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> the point being that, like, Dark Reign was this era in Marvel. That's really cool that, like, we lived in this world for X amount of time, and it was very different. And, like, they shouldn't be afraid to, like, do that. They're not afraid to alienate readers by making different characters look different or whatever. I mean, like, why not just make their world a little bit more different and fun? Like, yep. it's fun to see yeah. Norman Osborn in charge for about two years. <laughs> and you know? now that he's a crazy so guy cool. getting attacked by the shrubberies. Oh, yeah, now dude. he looks like a goblin, like, in real life. It's weird. <laughs> dude, Norman Osborn. Dude, that was, to me, that was one of the coolest things. Because I remember that when they, was it, they announced the Dark Reign one-shot. Yeah. And they were like, this is not an event. This is like an era of comics, like the heroic yeah. age. And so they're like, so Norman Osborn is going to become director of S.H.I.E.L.D. What's the first thing he does? Dismantles it <laughs> and yeah. like replaces it with Hammer. <laughs> and can't even come up with a name for the acronym. And then, and then 
he holds a secret meeting with the big bads of the universe. Oh, being like, dude. okay, first thing first, uh, the, the world's keep peacekeeping task force, you're all fired. Second thing, <laughs> meet with all the bad guys and then gloat. Like, dude, meet with Doctor Doom and go, hey, thing. hey, the goblin guy with the purse, I'm more important than you now. Oh, <laughs> who'd have thought that? Like, dude, that's that was, that was the funniest thing. He literally has a speech. You turn the page and he's like, and he marches off to have a meeting with Dr. Doom and Emma Frost and all these guys. Yeah. And that was super cool. I mean, I don't necessarily have a problem with reboots as long as they have a purpose. Mm -hmm. To me, there's a difference between saying, okay, we planned this out. Like we planned all this out. This is gonna be a great big, huge thing, you know, and then it's going to serve a purpose. Like Infinite yeah. Crisis to me was kind of a, it wasn't really a reboot reboot. It was kind of a reshuffling, but yeah. it was cool because it brought the multiverse back and it set the stage for the return of a lot of characters that we hadn't seen. And like Rebirth is much the same way. The problem is doing a reboot with like a panic button, just being like, oh, Oh my god everything's popping off and then panic you know like that's what marvel <laughs> legacy was like marvel it's legacy it's all popping is, off shit got real guys yeah that's exactly it like like marvel legacy is is dc or i'm sorry marvel sitting around and saying okay so like a lot of people don't like what we did with like secret empire they don't like what we did with like marvel now 2.0 and like all new order for marvel like reset button like panic <laughs> and like they oh, hit the button and they're just like marvel legacy everyone you know and then it's just and, and it's kind of cool because we make it good stories i mean i'm a firm believer in this that i think we're going to see some cool stuff coming out of marvel now uh especially because of like the fact that like all right we got to Dump is this all this Marvel now? Stuff. I think it's, isn't this Marvel Legacy? No, 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 no. I'm saying like we're gonna see some cool he stuff from Marvel now. now. Oh, like, yeah, like, they gotta stop naming their events. <laughs> they gotta stop saying stuff. I mean, I personally, now. like I personally <laughs> wouldn't have, uh, I wouldn't have called it Marvel Legacy. I would have just re-co-opted the Heroic Age and yeah. just called it like Heroic Age 2.0 or whatever, or just called the Heroic Age. Well, like nobody's gonna care. Like during like, the Heroic Age, they never actually did anything. Like that was yeah. not like that was literally just them <laughs> being like, well, like we gotta put something at the top. Yeah. That, and that's that's what I would say, like, because I mean, I think Heroic Age would be like a perfect complement to where they were with a, what yeah. a lot of people didn't like. I loved a lot of the stuff that they were doing with all new, all different Marvel and Marvel now. But yeah. the fact that they're trying to sort of rebrand and say, like, we are going back to the way things used to be with heroes being heroes, like the Heroic Age is a perfect name. And I don't know why they didn't they didn't take that. But to me, the Marvel Legacy idea just comes hot off the heels of the fact that a we lot of people didn't like Secret Empire. Okay. And they didn't like a lot of the things that Marvel was pulling off. And the result is that they hit a panic button and they just kind of said, okay. But like the original Crisis on Infinite Earths, Marvel was an absolute nightmare. By the, I'm sorry, DC was an absolute <laughs> yeah. nightmare by the time Crisis on Infinite Earths. Like if you go back and read the history, <laughs> nobody knew where to start. You had like five different versions of Superman from five different universes. And nobody knew which one was the actual Superman if you were new to comics. Well, and and so, that and, wasn't a problem when fandom didn't care, but when, but when yeah. fandom was evolving and they wanted to tell different stories and they wanted to be like... They just simply didn't want Superman to be lame anymore. And when I say that, I don't mean like Superman was lame in the in, you know in the seventies and eighties, but they also wanted to tell more modern stories, and they wanted to like establish something. Like they had a plan, in as much as they had a desire to do something different. And I, I will applaud Christ Seven and Earth until the cows come home because it ushered in a totally amazing era in DC Comics history. It created, it it, it allowed for Vertigo to exist. It allowed for Batman to be the character they kind of always wanted him to be. It was amazing. Like they did a lot of really, really fantastic stuff yeah. because of that reboot. And that, re, that, that reboot did kind of save DC a bit. No, I mean, it's, and, and that's true. Like, like Donna Troy is a really good example. Oh God, like, yeah. Like, Wonder Girl was originally Wonder Woman when she was a kid. She was the Wonder Woman equivalent of Superboy. Right. And then, like, Robert uh, Kaniger, I think it was, who was writing, like, who launched Teen Titans, was like, you know what? Let's just bring her on to the Teen Titans. So somehow, <laughs> Wonder Girl was in the present day, <laughs> and no one knew how, and there was no explanation. So mm -hmm. then they had to go through all this shuffling in order to make it make sense, and then her character just became convoluted and insane. And that was just one of the things that went on that led right. into Crisis that's... on Infinite Earths. Yeah. But to me, that's an organic reboot, because they're doing it in response to the fact that their universe had become so chaotic and hard to understand that new readers didn't know where to start. And so they said, okay, done. No more multiverse. We get a singular universe. This is the only version of Batman you ever get, unless it's an Elseworlds thing. But, yeah. you know, this is it. And then from there, like, if you're reading Batman, you're reading Bruce Wayne, who gets his bat back broken by, by Bane. You're reading Bruce Wayne, who gets time displaced by the Omega Sanction, and Dick Grayson takes his place for a while, or, I'm sorry, um, uh, John Paul Valley takes his place for a while. Then, eventually, Dick Grayson takes his place for a while. And, you know, you have all these things that go on with these particular characters but it's easy and it's simple and it's very you know very easy to follow to me that's a good reboot that yeah. is something that has a purpose and has merit what marvel legacy is doing is cool and i love the story and i'm excited to see what happens but that is a panic button that's yeah. all that is. that's them just kind of panicking with everything that happened
Yeah, I want proof that Marvel Legacy is part of a grand plan that has like half the amount of brain power and like and creative juices that Rebirth does. I don't think it is. I, I agree I think, with you. I, I, I think, think it's just. I think. I think uh, Jason Aaron had a concept like Avengers BC, and they're gonna fight a celestial at the end. Like, I think that's the thing. And then Marvel's like, can we tie everything to that? <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. I imagine. Like, I mean, it's, it was. It was <laughs> as, as, as excited as Tiffany. I am because. Like there have been, I mean, great era, like great stories have come out of less wait, thought wait, out. Wait, wait, Rob, wait. Right. So, Tiffany is distracted, looking at Overwatch Halloween skins. I am. Are you really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. I am. Tiffany doesn't even care. She's looking at Overwatch Halloween skins. No. Wow. I mean, never mind the fact that I was playing Destiny playing in this, this podcast. But I thought anyway. I wouldn't notice. But oh, I mean, can. come on, guys, May. Adorable. <laughs> anyway, oh, yeah. I want to get these other Bay's two uh, cheers adorable. out of the way so that we can move on. I, I don't want this to be forgotten. Um, and uh, for some reason, I don't know why the bot is not saying your name, Decepticon. Uh, but it's Decepticon 690. Uh, he gave cheer 100. That uh, that's what Japan is doing with their manga. They have different IPs of this in the same magazine. The anthology idea. Um, I wish Western comics would do the same format. The anthology things. I mean, I agree. I love reading the mag. Like you just get shown and jump, and you get like seven books. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if DC brought those back. If DC was like, okay, so like people want to see Shazam come back, they want to see Martian Manhunter come back, they want to see these things happen, and they'll get their own stories. But for like the lesser known characters, yeah. like I wouldn't immediately give Legion of Superheroes its own book. Yeah. I would put I would put Legion of Superheroes in an anthology series. Like I would throw that like Connor Kent Superboy, different things like that. Like I would throw those in a book, and you would just get four stories featuring those characters, and you let that run. And you see what the popularity is. Like, I mean, you just rotate them out with different things. So if, you know, the DC anthology, whatever it is, sells higher when Legion of Superheroes is in there than when they're not in there, well, then you know Legion of Superheroes is a huge fan draw. And then you just throw out a solo series based on that and see how long it runs. That's what I would do. Because I think it's a safe way to expose new readers to characters that already exist. And it's a way to bring, you know, existing readers back to those characters without having to take the risk of just losing money on a title that doesn't perform. Because that's what happened with Martian Manhunter. He got his own solo series that lasted like 12 issues and got canceled. Oh, he's, a, so, he's I mean... <laughs> multiple attempts to make yeah. Martian Manhunter sell and they just don't. Yeah, I mean Shazam. I mean, hasn't had had solo shock. Ever, I mean, I know there's a whole bunch of other stuff behind the scenes, but every attempt they've actually made at making Static Shock, he just didn't sell. So he got canceled. Yeah. No, um, Shazam had his own solo series in the new. No, he had backup feature in the new 52. Uh, he hadn't had his own solo series since 1993. So, like, I mean, to me, it's it's kind of the smart thing to do. Yeah, you know, take yeah. that risk. Um, his second cheer was along the same idea that he would like to see them have the same book. Uh, I think it was just trying to get our attention with these. Uh, guys, if you do a cheer, I will get to it. Just I don't want to interrupt the conversation sometimes, so it may just get backlogged. But we will hit every one of the questions in the cheers that I, that I see. So. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, I like how people still call Shazam Captain Marvel. That's how you know they've been reading for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> he hasn't been called that in forever. No, no. he hasn't been called that since... Hell, man, he wasn't called that since he first popped up in the 1940s. <laughs> they had to change it in the 70s when they brought him back. Yeah, they, I mean, well, they, they changed the name of the book, but they called him Captain Marvel. I mean, even all, all the way up to uh, uh, Public Enemies, they called him Captain Marvel. Did they really? Yeah. I, yeah. Thought, they, I thought they only called him Shazam like once they brought him back. No, I never it wasn't read until the new 52 80s, did they remove so. the Captain Marvel title. Yeah. Oh, see, I never read him before the new 52. And for, so. and what I well, understand I never is read. the reason they had it is they both <laughs> no had a did. copyright on it. And, like, DC just let the Captain Marvel name lapse. And Marvel was like, yeah. oh, ours, ours, ours. <laughs> That's the name of our company. We should definitely yeah. have a Marvel character. What the hell? Yeah. Yeah, that's oh, weird. There you go. <laughs> so, okay. Um, I mean, I, we're kind of going to the end of our usual time for the podcast. I think today was a really productive and interesting discussion uh, overall. Agreed. Uh, we hit all the yeah. topics we're going to talk about. I know we, were, we, we did mention we would talk about the Star Wars trailer. But not only has Tiffany not seen it, I don't know if Sal has seen it. The chat doesn't want us to talk about it. All okay. I'm going to say without in this is that this is no spoiler. Don't worry. This is no spoiler. <laughs> is that it, either it is full of spoilers or full of misdirection. So watch it at your own volition. It's your own decision. Yeah, the, the director says I, don't see it. Yeah. Really? Yeah. The director says don't watch the trailer. Rian Johnson said don't watch it. You, you got to remember when it comes wow. to trailers, they're always cut by a different house. They're never cut by the same company. Yeah. Oh, okay, dude. All right. If that is a spoiler heavy trailer, I bet Disney is pissed. Like they'd probably be pissed off. Like you literally just spoiled the hell out of our movie. Yeah. Like, right? <laughs> people will still go see it. Oh yeah. But, oh, yes. like, but 
No, I always thought trailers were cut by the director. I never really thought about no, them being it's, cut. No, out. it's it's a it's another group. I mean, sometimes they are, I guess, but like I think it's like only smaller. Yeah, art that's, house how have, uh, that's how you have. how you get Suicide Squad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah that's that, true. Whatever company D- WB was using to cut the trailers for the superhero movies needs to be fired. No, that's Agreed. the same company that Disney just hired for Mar- Star Wars, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> wow. uh, They're like, wow, these guys did a good, good, pretty cheap job on the Suicide Squad one. Oh, did it get a good reaction? Oh, yeah, people liked it. Oh, okay, cool. Let's go ahead and go with that one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so one last question, I guess, before we wrap things up. Uh, when do you guys think the Infinity War trailer is going to drop? I heard they're still working on it, which is which must be horseshit. <laughs> oh no, yeah, I did read that. No, they said the trailer that we're getting is different from the one shown at D twenty three. Oh, okay, oh. that's right, that's right. The I, I was thinking that. Thor. So, so yeah, that. it's that gotta would be, be Thor. smart. That yeah. would be or really Star Wars. Smart. Or Star Wars. I mean, if yeah. not Thor, definitely Star Wars. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, here's the thing. I mean, like, I think we as like comic book goers are going to go and see Thor no matter what, but I, I I feel like the audience for Star Wars is more broad, so it's just going to depend on do they going to try to get into the average public, or are they just going to be like, let's target our audience. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Guys, talking Somebody. about Flash War, there's no information, just that there's going to be a Flash War. Yes, it's going to be Barry <laughs> Allen versus Wally West. Yeah, we, we don't have any Dude, information I, I, to give you, so <laughs> we have nothing to discuss. Flash War yeah. just sounds like they're going to strip naked and just go for it, and they're like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> that, no, that would be a flash orgy. <laughs> no! No, they're going to flash people. Yes. Uh, flash Like, get some overcoats. Yeah. Whoever can flash the most people without yeah. them realizing it. Okay, Rob, we'll yeah. do our winner. own flash war. We're both going to go into Denver, and we're both going to have coats with nothing underneath and see how many people we can flash. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's a that's not a very good idea. And that I'm was the day okay a comic story and a comic explained. We're arrested. <laughs> yeah. Two YouTubers arrested for flashing people. <laughs> News at eleven. <laughs> uh, Mass unsubbings. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. But anyway, uh yeah, I guess that kind of wraps the show up. Yeah, I guess so. Awesome. Thank you for everyone for being here. I mean, I know we're all the mm-hmm. hosts, but I want to thank you for arriving. Because New York oh, Comic yeah. Con was two days ago, and we're all half asleep and dead inside. Sure yeah. We are yeah. dead inside. Oh. <laughs> are you not, I mean, not dead really. inside, I'm Tiffany? Just... No. I'm dead I'm still inside. Glitter and kittens. My feet are brutalized. <laughs> mm. Wow. My, my, my whole shoulder is pretty bad. No, I, my lower back hurts and my feet. Natalie wanted to go boxing this morning, and I'm like, I hurt. <laughs> you forget I'm old. I need to recoup. <laughs> well, I mean, here, here's the thing. Like, it's you don't think about it until it's over. It's just how yeah. much walking you're doing, how much, like, if you're carrying, like, a backpack, just how much weight is there. Yeah. I said Rob const- carried the backpack. <laughs> Un- Wait, hang uh, on. Rob carried a backpack until he didn't, and then I carried his comics. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? Thank I offered. You, Tiffany. I offered. Uh, <laughs> bull- yeah. Are you not entertained? <laughs> you know, all right. There's this article that says Iron Man uh, dies after being bitten by a snake. Now, the content of the article says he was one of those Iron Man triathletes or whatever it is. But I'm sitting here thinking, like, Iron Man just gets bitten by a snake. He's like, oh, no. Oh, I thought I was going to get snake powers. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> wow. Become the head of the Serpent Society. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to be that guy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, thoughts but, on oh. the trailers. The Justice League trailer looks cool. Um, I actually didn't notice much of a di- Let's talk about that real fast. I didn't okay. notice much of a difference until so someone put them side by side. Apparently, it's just a lot brighter. Like, overall. Really? <laughs> yeah. It looks like that. everything's on fire. <laughs> oh, dude. Okay. Okay. So, here's, here's my thought. So, we got Man of Steel. We got Batman versus Superman, and people were like, these movies are too dark, and nobody wants to read about emo Superman. Like, we want to read about Superman who's cheery and hopeful, like the one in the comics right now. So I think Superman's going to come back, and he's going to be like, I have a new appreciation for life since I didn't have it for a while. And yeah. so, like, <laughs> I now, I am, yeah, now I'm going to be, like, cheery Superman. What I'm hoping is they don't do overkill. Where he's like Glee Club Superman, like I do not want to see that Superman. I don't <laughs> think Cavill is capable of being Superman that kind of from Supergirl. Mm. I like that version of. I mean, he's a cool version of Superman. I mean, yeah, yeah. it's fine. <laughs> he's a Superman that exists. <laughs> yeah, he's fine. I got no complaints about him. I liked him in Road to Perdition, so he's fine. Yeah. 
<laughs> so, and we're not going to talk about the Star Wars trailer because apparently it does contain spoilers. The director said even said not to watch it, so yep. I shouldn't yeah. have watched it. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I'm really sick of those porgs, and I don't even, I don't oh, even know what they are. Did you guys watch the, uh, the Venom movie prequel? What? So I watched the oh, life the uh, other day. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I, thought you were like, I watched that and see. remember the rumors, and I had to look up if it legit was, because that movie could very easily be a prequel to, to <laughs> Venom. You know what's amazing about that? When they when people were talking about it, and they were like, maybe it's a prequel to Venom, and friggin' like executives of Sony were like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude, I love, I love that reaction. Hey, Sony, is this like a prequel to the Venom movie? Uh... I mean, do you want it to be? <laughs> I can. I mean, will you yeah. go see Venom if it is? Did you like it, it? Will you go see Life if I say that? The yeah. movie was incredible. If you haven't seen Life, go see Life. Oh, I loved it. I did. Yeah, I, I saw it in 1978 it. when it was called Alien. <laughs> yeah, but this is a good one. Yeah. Oh, dude, you're so oh. full of crap. Alien was amazing. Are you saying Alien? <laughs> oh, so bounced. <laughs> Wow. Oh, you yeah. You ran Sal off. <laughs> that was good. That was good. I will not oh lie. When the it's alien in life went inside you. of the human body, I was waiting for it to be a chest burster. <laughs> no, no. Here's the funny thing, Sal. I could imagine us all like like eating dinner somewhere, and like Benny says that, and you're like, okay. And then you just get up and walk and just leave. <laughs> Yeah. And on that note, guys, we're going to be bringing this episode to a close. Wow. Thank you so much for joining us today for today's weekly poll. If this is your first time here, then every Tuesday at about 6 p.m. Eastern, the normal cast of Us 4 will be here talking about the latest pop culture, fun news, comic books, movies, whatever strikes our fancy. Um, we are doing it on an every other week basis at the moment, simply so that we get juicy information to give you guys we realized that there was a, a pre period during this in which we were kind of just talking about bullshit news that didn't go anywhere which didn't make for very interesting conversation points and we realized that we were kind of half-assing the podcast for you guys for the last i'd say six months because we were just finding whatever to talk about and we want to bring the weekly poll back to the same weekly poll that you guys voted the best podcast in which are, which was that awards show bleeding we got cool the bleeding cool one bleeding so cool. we are <laughs> so we decided that since everyone is so busy with the projects we'll just do it every other week to Tuesday, 6 p.m., and we will talk about the big topics, the big stuff, the stuff that matters so that we're not doing anything like the Flash War thing. Flash War's a thing. It's going to be cool, and then move on. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so we do thank you guys for sticking it out, hanging out with us, being here on the weekly poll. Um, if you do like uh, just hearing us talk, we also live stream here on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Mondays. Uh, on every Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, uh, so you can check it out playing Destiny, Overwatch, whatever we're talking about. Talk about whatever you want, from video games to comic books to comic book movies, and then come back for the weekly poll. Thank you guys so much. If this is your first time here, I'm Benny the Comic Historian. That is Sal from Comic Pop. That is Tiffany from Comic Pop. And that is Rob from Comics Explained, the three best goddamn comic book channels on the internet. I don't, I don't have a big head. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, you're... you're... You're speaking the truth. I mean, I don't know what people expect from you. <laughs> yeah. So. All right, guys. Yeah. Thank you so much. And don't forget, if you want to support the show, a simple subscription here at Twitch would be amazing. We would really appreciate you. But just being here really does help us. Thank you all, and have a good evening. Yep. Peace. I can't end this ever.